In this episode of the CFO Project Podcast, we answer your questions around how to build an online presence to attract more clients. Welcome to the CFO Project Podcast. Today, we're talking all about how to build an online presence to attract more clients. To help me with the discussion, I've invited Kate Johnson, the chief hustler of bookkeeping <laughs> side hustle to the show. Kate, welcome to the show. Hey, I'm glad to be here. I've, I've been called worse, so you can, <laughs> you can call me chief hustler. <laughs> I, I, love the, uh, I love the term chief hustler because your company is bookkeeping side hustle. It's, well, well so I think technically, my, so I only have one company and it's called Heritage Business Services. So that's my like bookkeeping firm. Okay. Uh, I only got one bank account, one EIN. Um, yeah. But I, you and I know each other in my sort of persona as bookkeeping side hustle Kate, but I'm a real firm owner. I really make money like serving clients. Um, and I just, you know, I have this community. And so I like to call myself the chief hustler whenever I'm. In, in a in in that role, um, yeah. and you know, you and I go back to being able to bring what the CFO project does to that community. I think a lot of bookkeepers are close to being CFOs anyway, and they're not charging for it. And, <laughs> I agree uh, with they that. They certainly have the mental capacity to do it. So it was, you know, it's been great getting to know you too, and what what you do because you're trying to help people like build the life and business that they dream of, and that's kind of what I try to do too. Totally, yeah. I love that. I mean, it, it's, you know, one of the reasons we wanted you to come on the podcast is because you have had a lot of expertise and success in branding yourself. Like you said, the bookkeeping side hustle, branding yourself online and attracting clients. And, and you practice what you preach. You, you're a firm owner. You mm -hmm. own, you have a book of clients. You're not just teaching this stuff or, or telling other people what to do. You're actually living it. And so that's one of the reasons we wanted you to come on. So, Welcome. I'm really excited you're here. I'm glad to be here. I can't. I hope, hope to be able to add. I uh, can't wait to um, just be able to add value to your community. And I'm so just tickled for the being able to be introduced to them as well. Excellent. All right. So let's go to our first question. All right. Betty wants to know, I offer both bookkeeping and advisory services and would love to grow a presence online so I can attract more clients. What would you advise me to do? So a uh, good question. I'm probably going to say something scary. I'm just going to speak from my experience. And I was able to grow my presence, my face, my persona because of video. And like accountants want to probably die and hide. But <laughs> I think um, that even just a little bit of video in your practice um, will go probably farther than any other uh, developments you can do for any sort of other social social media. And why is that? I think it's because when people see you and when they know what you look like and they like your nerdy jokes or your sarcastic jokes or, you know, whatever it is, you build a rapport with them. And that's, ki that's kind of how I started. And literally the bar is so low for <laughs> the like accounting and finance nerds that you don't have to be good. If you watch my early videos, I've got two YouTube channels. I've got Bookkeeping Side Hustle, but I also have one that was kind of a client-facing channel. Technically now, I think I call it Fix Your Fresh Books, if you wanted to find it. But if you look at those early videos, like, terrible, terrible. Um, but, like, not many people are doing it. And I can tell you that when a client finds me almost exclusively now, they have already fallen in love with me because they exclusively find me via YouTube. Um, and these are like my actual clients because I have a firm facing, ch like a client facing channel for my firm. And they, they're in, like they want me, right? And so I don't need to have a million people know who I am. I need to have the few people who are already gonna appreciate me for my specialties and my persona and the way I carry myself. And you're gonna be different than that. And you're gonna have clients that like what you bring. Um, so video scary, but it was the game changer for my business and I, 100% tell you every prospective client forum when I ask the last question is how did you find me? They say, I watched your videos. Mm, I love that. I, I have a couple of questions <laughs> to follow up Betty's question. Um, I love, first of all, I love how you said that you're not looking for a ton of clients. And I think that's so true. We all have to remember that, that 
we don't need a ton of clients as much as say a retail store needs a ton of clients because yes. retail stores like Walmart or Amazon has very low margins. I mean, they, they make maybe one to two percentage points on every dollar that they, a mm-hmm. product they sell. That's very, very low margins. Whereas bookkeepers, accountants, uh, advisors, our margins should be, <laughs> I mean, are or should be <laughs> very high. So we don't need a ton of clients to make a lot of money. And, and I love also what you said about, you know, the fact that people find you online and they fall in love with you because this is a relationship game. Mm -hmm. Um, so here's my, my, I guess my follow-up question for you, Kate, uh, based on Betty's question is if she was going to get a presence online, you're suggesting, suggesting video. So practically, are you saying like YouTube or, or TikTok or Instagram or whatever, what, sure. what do you suggest? Um, so uh, all of those will work. So mm-hmm. I would say the natural place that you feel most comfortable, like wherever you already know how to post, that's probably the best place to start. I like YouTube because it's searchable. And my mm. approach is, um, is as an instructor. So most of my FreshBooks videos are pretty technical. Um, and I'm, I'm definitely coming at it from more of the bookkeeper side. Um, I don't know if like pure CFO services lend themselves as much to um, like tutorials, but like my bread and butter are tutorials. You might, yours might be something different. Maybe you just want to be a talk, it's called a talking head video where you're just talking about cash flow concepts or, uh, you know, war stories from, uh, you know, a business that you heard shut down or, you know, something like that. Um, that would be, it's a different skill set. I have like a teacher persona on that channel. So that works for me. But all these social media platforms now are like prioritizing video. So it kind of doesn't matter. Oh, and okay. if I were good, like if I tried harder and actually, truthfully, if I probably hired a VA, because I do really all my own work, um, you're supposed to put them on all the platforms. To me, I can't, I, I just, that's not a bar that I'm, I cross, um, but I should, and if I paid probably actually not that much money, um, truthfully, it could be placed, someone else could place what I do. Like I could just stick to my lane. I'm really good at teaching fresh books. That's the general ledger I work in. Um, and then someone could slice and dice and make short for Instagram and tall and then wide for YouTube and all that. I don't even go that far, y'all, and I have a successful firm. Um, so I- any any place, video is where the world is heading, yeah. period, end of story. Algorithms are prioritizing it, um, and it can be placed anywhere. Um, so, yeah, wherever you're comfortable. Um, and for getting started, my advice is anytime you're asked the question more than once by a client, answer them with a Loom video and then put that on YouTube. You make a thumbnail for it, and you put that on YouTube. Uh, maybe either make it anonymous so you don't actually say the client's name or ask the client, hey, can I say your name? Um, but you can answer a client without saying their name, right? Like, um, so uh, if, you've a- if you've answered the same question more than once, that's probably a whole bunch of people have that question. And yeah. hey, uh, here's your answer. And, I'm, and then they don't even need to know that you've also placed it somewhere, given it a good title, and you're building your presence and probably people are going to watch two to three to four of your videos, but they're going to see that you have 50 and they're like, I don't even want to watch all these. These hurt my brain. I'm just calling her. I'm calling him. Yeah, right. She, she clearly knows what she's talking yeah, about. Exactly. And you sort of answered my second follow up question it was like, what do you, what do you talk about? And it sort of makes sense because you say that you are answering questions that clients have. And because you're putting them on YouTube, which is a search engine, you mentioned that. I believe it's actually the second largest search engine behind last Google. I've heard, yep, because I think Google owns it. Yeah, Google um, owns YouTube. Yeah. And it, it, it totally makes sense that people are searching for answers in YouTube and especially business owners, and you're answering the questions. So I, I'm assuming that somebody listening that, that wants to take this strategy, they could answer questions or they could, if they have you know opinions on certain things, they could. Is, is there a... Is there a type of format that they need to stick with? Like your format is answering questions. Does the audience get used to, used to that or does it matter? Um, I would even refine my format and say mostly it's tutorials. So that's tutorials. like tutorials. Kind of okay. Yeah. So I'm like, my face starts off big, but then I make myself small and the, the screen sharing is the star of my show um, when I do those videos. Um, Got it. Uh, like, so someone could do how to read a tax return and, you know, when you're just like scrolling through parts of a tax return and your face is small. And the reason I say, uh, I, I said that 
Adam was just because I feel like it's a it's an easier place for accountants to start. Like if you sit down with a blank piece of paper, you're you can't it's your writer's block, right? But if you sit down with like I'm going to open my email and who asked what? What was the most common question of my tax year or of my you know year-end prep calls? Um, it's less of a I think it's just less difficult for typical like non-creative accountants right uh, but right. the truth is you're going to get better and then it's not going to be hard and then you're then you're going to have the list of the 20 topics that you're excited to talk about rather than answering random question about what tax return do i file for my business structure um totally like, so that's not exciting but then you'll get you'll overcome your personality hesitancies to like put your face out there and then you'll be rocking and, and doing the things that make you excited yeah, absolutely. And I'm a firm believer that people will like you for you. So I think even if you weren't polished or a marketer, I think that's actually better <laughs> because I think my, my spidey senses go up when I hear these very polished people online telling me how to, you know, do X, Y, and Z online and, <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah. But if a real person is answering real questions and it looks authentic, I'm going to trust them more. That's that's worked for me. I have deliberately like I I don't want to like there's a tension between like you know feeding that Instagram algorithm and the, what's it doing to our children and all that and I'm like <laughs> I don't really want any part of that. I just want to teach. I yeah, just want to make you. Yeah. I want to help people. And so I don't make my thumbnail pictures. You can I mean go for brand photos if you want to, but literally I have one picture, and it's like the same one on almost all my thumbnails. Every once in a while I veer off and try to do something, but I almost. Like, I never hit that out of the park. So I'm just like, no, I, the words, I'm going to say what I'm talking about. I put one little picture of me. It's the same one. I'm not dancing. I'm not posing. <laughs> um, like, <laughs> and, because I want to be known for my brain, right? And so, and, and I believe that I'm, what I have to say is so good. And it's like proven itself true. Like, people watch one and they're like, I don't care what her thumbnail looks like. Or what she, I, sometimes I record videos after coming in from a run. Like, literally, I'm like, not... I don't look good at all. And it's like, I thought of something and I had to make a video. Like some of my videos, that's how it starts. I have to make this video right now to tell you about blah, blah, blah. And love my it. brain is what matters. Yeah, absolutely. Love it. Everybody listening, if you haven't already, sign up for our five-minute weekly email with practical tips for accountants and bookkeepers to escape the accountant's trap. Go to the cfoproject.com forward slash newsletter. All right, what's our second question? Kelly wants to know, I own a solopreneur accounting firm. I'd love to diversify my revenue streams. How should I go about doing that? Good okay. question. Kate, what are your thoughts? Yeah, so I'm a, I would consider myself a solopreneur too. So um, I have thoughts about that. Um, I would say I have turned a switch in my brain to where I am always on the lookout for how can I make money without clicking in a client file. And so that's like the mentality I have put on. Um, cause as a solopreneur, there's no, there's no scaling. There's no getting margin on billing your team out, right? Like if I'm clicking in a client file and making money, I can only serve so many. So, um, that's like my best advice. And I think once I realized that, holy smokes, there's a whole bunch of ways that people all over the world make money. So if you, if you just have your accounting lens on and you work for big four, like you got to get out, like start listening to business podcasts, start like figure out. How does the how does the dog walker make money? How does the um, daycare make money? Like those are the places. Like okay, that's maybe I could take an idea from that. Maybe I can take an idea from that. I don't I don't know. I'm not saying I've ever gotten an idea from a dog walker, but it's when I wasn't just focused on accounting firm money making, right? So um, that's the first tip. And once I started that, I started to see money everywhere. So um, I use referral income so like just this morning um, i have the best way to sell stuff is stuff that you love yourself i use relay bank and they have an accounting partner program with a referral uh kickback um, i'm a happy customer so it's really easy for me to talk about that i always disclose that there's a referral relationship there but every time i talk to a client what's one of the things they complain about their bank right and so I know in my mind, like, oh, that's an example of where I can make some money not clicking around in a client file. So literally on the call, I'm like, oh, hey, you know what? I got something for you. Just check it out. And I send them and I let them know. 
if you want to use this bank, it's mine. Here's a referral link. And they, all, they almost always are like, oh my gosh, yes, thank you. I'm, I'm signing up right now. Um, that's like one like, example. You do that one-to-one. Like you send it individ- to individual people. Sometimes. You know. I, so I, if, when I'm having those conversations, because at that same time, I'm also the hero, right? Um, right. She's got a problem. She had an actual problem, and I'm probably going to be able to use this tool to help her solve it. Um, but I also use my videos to help do that as well. So you can create a video about best bank for small businesses or the bank, here's the bank I use, and I already have a small audience. I mean, my, my fl- client-facing audience is not huge, y'all. Um, I'm not like a, you know, I'm not a YouTuber. I use YouTube to build my business, <laughs> okay? Like, that's yeah. how I think of myself. Yeah, um, there's a big difference. I agree There's a big you. difference. Um, but that could be a video where every once in a while, and if you only, if you only do videos like that where you're selling s- stuff like that, then people won't trust you, but... Every once in a while, I'm like, hey, I got this, I've gotten this question a lot, and I just want to let y'all know this is the bank I use or the payroll company I use um, or what, whatever. Um, that's one way. Um, I have a monetized YouTube channel, so that's another way. Like, literally, YouTube pays me every day. Um, it's tiny. You're not going to, no one's going to get rich making money off of YouTube. Um, I, um, I always try to think about, is there something I'm doing that is income generating that I can, like, duplicate? So... If I ever do a talk that has been paid, I try to repeat that over and over. Like I deliberately try to like push that into like other conferences, for instance. Um, so that helps me like at least get to go see the friends I want to go see in my in the industry, right? But I'm not having they're having to pay to go to the conference and I'm not. Um, so those are just some examples of ways that I have said, how can I like improve my bottom line without doing clicking in a client file? Um, yeah. and those are the, those are the main things that are, that are coming to mind. Um, I've sold, I have a, you can write a book. So there's lots of apps that make it really easy to put like downloadable resources. Um, I sell an accountable plan template, which all will resonate with all of y'all, um, accounting types. Um, it's not a lot, but I use an app called Gumroad, um, but there's a gajillion where you can put a button like, so if you're telling people on YouTube about how to claim home office expenses and you can say, hey, and if you don't need a template, I got a, I got a resource right here. Um, I haven't sold FreshBooks resources yet, but I plan to like weekly bookkeeping checklist or, um, you know, and it could, it's not going to be big dollars, but if as the audience grows and people are buying it, that's like, that's mailbox. It's, it's sleep money, right? Like I'm making money. I don't know when people are buying it, but they are. Um, so that's another way, like I legitimately make money too, is via like buttons on the internet, um, totally. of, of my stuff. Um, Hey there, Adam Lane with the CFO project podcast. Are you an employed accountant or bookkeeper that would like to start an advisory service on the side? Well, we have a free training for you called side hustle CFO. We'll show you how to start a business on the side, offering CFO and advisory services to small business owners. We conduct this training every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern and 12 p.m. Pacific. Go to thecfoproject.com and click on free trainings to register. I think the key what you what you're saying is that you leverage what you know, but there's multiple ways to leverage what you know other than just having to work in a client's on a client's mm-hmm. business. Mm-hmm. Cause I think a lot of accountants and bookkeepers are, are thinking I know accounting and bookkeeping. And the only way I can make money is when I'm doing taxes or doing the books, but you can leverage your existing knowledge of accounting and bookkeeping by making money doing other ways. I think that's the, that's what you're sort of highlighting mm-hmm. here. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it, it, and there's, there's plenty, there's tons of ways, honestly. And, and the internet has made it unbelievably easy to diversify revenue streams and to make money. But the, but the key is you have to find this sort of product market fit. In, in other words, you, you have to have an audience that wants what you have to say. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so either one of those two things have to, to, to change. If nobody's, if you're trying to sell something that nobody wants, either one of two things have to change. Either you have to find a different audience or you have to change what you're selling to that audience. Mm-hmm. And I think that's, that's sort of what you were, you figured out is how, especially with those YouTube videos, you fa- you figured out the audience and figured out what, pe- what the audience wants. The audience being business owners who are having trouble with fresh books mm-hmm. and you figured out how to sell them something to attract their attention by selling these instructional videos online. And then you can use that trust 
to sell them other things like mm -hmm. relay affiliate mm -hmm. of uh, yeah i don't lead affiliates. with that i don't lead with that right it's right right i mean exactly. and i might every once in a while i could send a hey did you know that this just cha like relay just released the credit card that's a perfect thing where i could do a blast but for the most part um it's it's an easy thing. I have it kind of organized to where I have access. So when she said that, I was like, "Hey, hold on. Let's, we're going to take one minute. I got your, I got your, I got you, okay." Um, and yeah. I have it at my fingertips to be able to like execute on some of that. I'm gonna, oh. I want to add one more thing. That's pa I call it passive-ish because you do have to work. Um, you don't make it. You don't do it <laughs> in your sleep. But I sell a service called my office hours. Um, mm. It's for people who can't afford my premium tier. Uh, of what I do, and you know, even in CFO level services, there might be people like, "Golly, I want you so bad, I'm not ready to be able to to be like your full blown client." But is there a way that you can start to nurture them to then maybe one day graduate to becoming your client, right? So my office hours is for FreshBooks users who are DIYing their books. Um, so this is just a, a, a model. Y'all will have to tweak it for your own businesses, but. Um, I've decided to do it weekly, um, but the margins are great. I mean, everyone who joins, like, I'm not working anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't take a to-do list. I'm like, if we don't get to you, like, I actually used to take a to-do list. I used to say, oh, I'll, I'll get, I'll work on that. And like, what? No, stop. My list was getting, I'm like, they're not paying for that. Um, so that was like a lesson learned. But uh, Tuesday afternoons at 1.30 for an hour, I'm available to this paying group of people. So it's MRR. It's easy. There's no responsibility. Um, it's building an insane amount of goodwill. I'm a literal hero because they, they need us so bad, right? Totally. They need us, right? And they, they can't pay for all of me, but they can pay for a little bit of me. And then they're learning from each other, too. And so the value of that has almost become like a little bit of a mastermind. So half the questions are technical, like, how do I... It, record a client refund like okay wah wah that's like no fun but they need to know still <laughs> right i can yeah. answer the question um but then it's like the questions start talking about pricing or why did you have to issue a client refund like that's that's uncool like what where, what went wrong right let's talk about that and then they're talking about it amongst each other and it's literally my favorite hour of the week uh, you have to be able to think on your feet and not be like scared of because i there's no prep. I don't log on. No one submits questions. I'm so I'm willing to take questions by fire, and that's that's a skill, and maybe not something that everyone um, would feel comfortable doing. But the margins are kind of infinity, um, because I mean, I guess eventually, if it got too big, I would start adding more hours. But um, yeah, it's working out well now. Or charging and more. I love it. I love or or charging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That that would weed out some people. But you have to decide like what's the goal of it, and is the goal to become a monthly client like. Totally. That's, the, that's the thing you have to wrestle with. So I like yeah, that well. idea a lot. It's my most fun money that I'm making right now. Wow, that's really cool. And plus you can repurpose all of that content. These these questions that are people asking, uh -huh. you can repurpose and record it for YouTube. And then it's sort of this life cycle. That's the only, that is the only to-do list I let myself add now is if something I know is really juicy, I sort of save it and I say, hey, you know what? I will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this for you. And I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm invited to your account. I'm going to do it for you because I know it's going to be good. And then I'll, I'll, I'll as long as they agree, it's cool. Yeah. So. Wow. Well, Kate, this has been a fantastic conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, my last question, where can people find you online? <laughs> so um, I am on Twitter at Bookkeeping Side. Um, I'm technically also on Twitter at Kate Joe, J-O-M-C Johnson, I think. at uh, uh, my, That's my firm facing here. Uh, handle i handle. kind of have two personas and i'm yeah. on linkedin at kate josephine johnson there's a lot of kate johnson's out there so kate josephine johnson on linkedin would be great and any group would be great and anyone's welcome to join the bookkeeping side hustle facebook group perfect okay well we'll put all that in the show notes kate thank you so much for being with us today i'm so glad to be here thank you for having us can't wait to uh, see what your community is going to do with this knowledge excellent me either so uh, to everybody listening, if you haven't already, sign up for our five-minute weekly email with practical tips for accountants and bookkeepers to escape the accountant's trap. Go to thecfoproject.com forward slash newsletter. See you next time on the CFO Project Podcast.